Okay, 7 a.m. I'm rolling out here. I walk my dog every morning along our beautiful golf course and that big bright spot you see out there is the ocean. Hard to see it today, but you can hear there's a good sized swell happening. So the reason I showed you my watch, it's 7 a.m. By the end of this day, we're gonna have a quilt done. Okay, I won't tell you what time it is because then you'll know how long I've been goofing off, but it is certainly time to go have some fun in the ocean. I will be back real soon to start the tutorial process of this video. That was super fun, had a blast, caught a couple of waves I, I really enjoyed. But like I said, we've got a quilt to make. I am almost out of time for making today's video. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to run the clock down so I could show you how to do this super fast and simple, easy project. I have a super great panel I've already created, put the borders on it, and I'm gonna drop it onto my fantastic new Juki J350, the Mayabi, the long arm, and I'm gonna show you how you would set it up if you were working on a panel quilt. Time to get to work. That's right, gang, and I won't even again, like I said, show you my watch and tell you how far behind schedule I have fallen today. Oh, by the way, welcome back to another fantastic studio episode of Making It Fun. I am Rob Appel, your host for Michael Miller Fabrics. I am so excited you're here. I hope you've had a wonderful day, evening, whatever time it is when you're watching this. I hope you've been up to something creative. Of course, I am. My creative list has gotten so high that I actually started today's video with the thought process of, I will do a fun, fast project because what I really want to teach us all, including myself, is how to get a large scale panel onto a long arm machine and machine quilt it the handle. So I've got a couple ideas. Today's disclaimer, always have a disclaimer for you. I am not a professional long arm quilter. I am a professional, can't even say it. I am a professional quilt maker. I love making quilts. I've got hundreds and hundreds of designs out there, but I have just recently partnered up with Juki brand sewing machines and I'm super excited. I wanted a long arm really, really bad. They have a wonderful long arm, the J350. We call it the Mayabi. That's its little nickname. At any rate, it's a great machine. I have it right over here in the studio. You're gonna see it in a minute, but I am brand new to long arm quilting. So everything I am doing right now is all about the learning curve, the practice. And so I am not shooting this video as an expert. Rolling, this should be pretty fun. Ow, whoa, oh, that was a camera I just hit my head on. I am shooting this video as how can I put this little fun, simple quilt onto the frame that is gonna have a limited range of motion because it's a frame. I'm used to seated machine quilting, all of that kind of stuff. So that's what the tutorial is all about. And because it's this fantastic fabric line called Feline Friends from Michael Miller, the designer is Little Red House, fantastic li licensed designer, starting off with this super, super cool panel, right? So let's just dive right now into the show and tell. And of course, we'll have a prize at the end of today's show. The show and tell is also the prize, although I'm not sending you my samples. I'll get in trouble for that. I'm going to send the lucky winner to the quilt shop of their choice, this beautiful fat quarter bundle of the Feline Friends. I have some fantastic other basics, some gorgeous cotton couture. I've got a couple of these little pieces. I'll throw that in the package for the quilt shop themselves. You know how the rules work. Back to show and tell, right? Feline friends, super fun. So we have the panel, awesome. We also have the cheater pillow panels, the mini panels, the micro squares. Look at these, are these cute or what? We've got all of these fantastic little guys hanging out with the repeat of a small version here of the large panel you just saw. And these just really clever little cats and mice hanging out. We have a border print also, you know I love my border prints. So this will be a double border print and these fabrics all started shipping in September. So you should be able to find these at your local quilt shop. Remember, that's why we're doing the making it fun thing here. We want to remind you the importance of the relationship in your local quilt shop. Those quilt shops count on all of us quilters to visit those shops and find fabulous stuff take advantage of the education that's going on, all of those kinds of things. So anyways, you know me, I'm all about a local quilt shop. My mom and I had a local quilt shop for a million years. 
I know I don't look that old, right? And uh, it's just really, it's just been such a blessing for me to be part of our community in that way. And so that's why the videos and that's why the Michael Miller sponsorship is to let you all know we love you. We want you to enjoy your local quilt shops. Now, let's dive into a couple of these little coordinates because there's one I'm just got to show you. I'm not even going to make you wait. Right there it is goldfish, right? I mean, is that amazing? I just love it. Of course, the mice with the cheese is another winner. I think that's super cute. We have balls of yarn. We have cats all over in a little tossed format. You get down into here, they're doing a little bit more bouncing around. In today's project, I'm actually using this really cool coordinate. It's like a moon and a stripe, excuse me, a moon and a star kind of in a diagonal by a stripe. I love it. And with the panel, let's talk about this for a second because it was one of the strategies I used bouncing into the tutorial already. When I got my panel, it was cut and you can see the cut lines right along the edge. What I wanted to do was to make it look like I had done some really intricate sewing to create some like very minute borders. But all I really did was lay my ruler right here along this printed line and I cut a half of an inch of the blue fabric, like a fussy cut, half of an inch of the blue so that you can see it over here in the panel as the narrow strip. But again, it's not a patchwork, it's just the print. So the navy blue is a print, the light blue is a print, and there is that awesome coordinate I was just talking about. That falls into place, and then I have my toss cats on the background, and that is really, really fun and easy to do. So there was very little patchwork. I did a two inch um, strip for the interior border, we'll call it, and then I did a four and a half inch strip for the exterior border, and I basically just put them on vertical first so that it would just get wider and wider, and I would still have enough across the bottom. Once the quilt top was completely done, I took the time to put onto the back of the quilt frame the wonderful coordinating um, little fish bones, we'll call them. Another great band. I know you, if you know me and you know the kind of music I like, fish bone. Okay, just right now, in the comments below, if you were or are a Fishbone fan, I need to know it. Yeah, we're gonna use this on the backing. I have preloaded the frame. I am super pumped up about this. I have floated some batting on here. Why am I talking about it? You just come with me. You've gotta see this. This is so cool. Let's just grab, pull these pins out, our quilt top and walk it right over to the long arm. That's right, it's just right here and it fits beautifully. Now, the first thing we've gotta do is we gotta figure out how to get this thing on here so it fits correctly. Even though my cats are directional like this, I'm not gonna bother trying to keep them upright because what I wanna do is as a few amount of passes or rolls across the frame as possible. I've already experimented once with an applique to see if this would work. So now all I need to do is because I'm not doing a linear based motif is I'm gonna slide my quilt top in. I have floated the batting I have a smaller piece of batting, so I've just floated my batting in. I have floated the quilt top on at the moment. We're just gonna do it over here a little closer to all of you so you can all see what's happening as well. Okay, at this moment now, I'm gonna put a little more tension on the ratcheting bar of the frame. What I wanna first do is run a straight basting stitch across here, because remember, what the whole video is about is how do I handle all of this center section when I still can't reach it? I have an 18 inch throw. It's a beautiful machine, I'm not complaining, but I will say when it comes to quilting, there's never big enough. And so, yes, I cannot quilt the entire quilt in one reach. So I'm going to be re-rolling this. How do I do it strategically? I'm gonna choose motifs like brick work to make all this make sense. So I'm gonna first start with a really fine, a really light basing to keep all my layers together over here. So I'm gonna start up here in this top corner where I just wanna get a little bit of a basting stitch. So why we've been practicing even on our table mount machines, good starts and stops is so that I'm always doing good starts and stops. Remember, I knew the Juki was coming. I actually have been building the Juki for months over here 
getting it ready for us. So in order to do this, again, I'm not an expert, I'm just learning. I want to go ahead and put my needle uh, in one position and then the other so that I can pull up on my threads, floss underneath to get that bobbin thread in my fingers. Okay, and now I should be able to just go ahead and hit the gas. And I'm just kind of running a real nice light little stitch where I think will be roughly a quarter of an inch. So this will get caught on the binding is my goal. If you've been following my videos about quilting for a long time, you know I always say we start in the middle of the project and that's on a domestic machine, that's on a table mount machine and basically because the way we're working. On a frame, we're gonna work in one direction. So not from the middle in all directions, but from the top basically down, or in this case, a side over. So I wanna keep thinking, where does my next seam go? Where does my next seam go? So for this right now, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna lay a seam right across this blue line right here. And that's just gonna lock this down, okay? Because what I'm really trying to do is get into the field so that I can machine quilt around here and show you how I do the start and pick up so that you don't see a straight line across here from the two positions of the machine. Coming to the corner where the seams meet there. Needle down, needle back up so that I can bring that bobbin thread to me. I've got it. I'm just doing my best to basically stitch right along the ditch. Okay, now we're to another intersection. And at this point I can come down this way because I want to section out the blue border. Okay, but I've run out of room. The frame and the machine can't go any further this way. So I'm gonna make a few more stitches in place. Then I'm going to basically uh, move so that I can tie on and off, cutting at that bobbin thread. So let's not be afraid to do a start, lots of starts and stops. Now what I need to do is I want to change thread. And because I want to use an orange thread on this next pass, let me show you how I like to do that. I'm actually just going to cut, tie, and move on. It's very quickly. While I'm doing this, I've cut that thread. I'm dropping the new color into position, pulling it right over the thread rack. And all I'm doing is just tying a real simple little knot so that both thread tails go together. This is my trick. I like to grab it right above the eye of the needle and then pull, whoop, <laughs> all the way through and then I cut this knot right behind that excuse me I cut the thread right behind the knot so that I don't have anything to try to pull through the eye of the needle And now that the machine's rethreaded, we're just gonna come right back down. We're on the other side of the beautiful orange celestial coordinate. So I'm gonna basically drop my needle, pick it back up. Now I have my bobbin thread. I think you know the drill. I'm just running that seam line. all the way back up here to the top. Now that that's done, the same thing. I can stop again. Tying that together. Now, you're gonna say, Rob, did you really just put orange thread in for one quick pass? Why, yes, yes I did. Because, hey, where'd my gray thread go? Oh, I was using it for winding a bobbin. Because, Quilting is all about your thread color choices. Quilting is all about utilizing the right supplies in the right place. And it is time for us to start playing in this beautiful brick area where the cats and uh, the brick wall are. So yeah, I do want the gray thread. And because it's so easy to change, 
And that's why I'm teaching you to cut and retie, especially on any industrial machine. Any machine that has a lot of eyelet instead of clips to hold threads, it's much easier because you don't have to spend all day re-threading the little eyelets in the machine. See how fast and easy that is? <laughs> Didn't even speed up the video and post for that for you. I will be sweeping a lot later, I'm sure. Now that the machine's re-threaded with the gray thread in here, let's come up to this corner right up in here, and we're gonna start working this brick wall. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to machine quilt the bricks of the brick wall in their mortar or in their cement, and I'm gonna leave everything else alone so that it will loft or lift off later. That's the goal. So I'm gonna come down here almost to the corner, and I'm going to uh, drop my needle, pick it back up so I've got my bobbin thread, now we are going to go ahead and machine quilt up and back. I'm literally just following the motif of the brick, but here's what I want to say. I've run out of room here. I'm going to come back down this brick wall and back. What I want to start focusing on right now is not creating the exact same line of travel all over. So what I'm going to do is kind of mask in a little bit of my start stop around the yarn ball. And this here, this kind of motif is exactly why the long arm is awesome for a quick project. A lot of you like me that have been doing domestic quilting for a long time and maybe have just been considering getting a long arm or have gotten a long arm, but you're, like I said, like me, you're noticing that you're not as accurate yet with the long arm. Like I can do some really cool designs, but man, I can't stay on target to save my life. Look at this, I'm, I'm awful. This poor little goldfish is gonna have a halo around him. But I have found, like with everything in life, the more I practice, the more proficient I'm becoming, and I'm really enjoying the benefits of the machine. I ran into a stopping spot back there, so you can see where I doubled back that brick, that mortar, just coming up and back, following it in. And a lot of us will also, a lot of us as in quilt teachers, will promote the use of a panel like this for practicing, learning to machine quilt, because you didn't spend all week doing your patchwork. You're more willing to experiment with your machine quilting. And a lot of the times you're following printed lines which give you something to follow, unlike open blocks or patchwork, which is kind of more of a, an area where you feel like you've got to do some crazy, beautiful motif. Okay, now again, I'm using the cat as an anchor point on this side. So I'm quilting the brick walls, coming to where the cat is, and then just following the cat. But I'm coming all the way back up to where I left off, so that it looks like the cat is completely outlined. And in the long run, that will give the appearance of an applique. Okay, now I can follow this, and now I'm actually gonna come around here because I'm out of bricks, and I'm just gonna get to a really good stopping point in a shadow. Right here is great. So, I wanna go ahead, I wanna lock down my threads. Let's take a couple more stitches in place. Needles back up. I'm gonna go ahead and move this and now let's talk about a couple of new things. First of all, before I re-roll this and before I actually cut the blue thread, I really should have come down here and put that line of stitching in here with the blue. Although it could be done on a regular machine later on if I just had to do this one last row of stitching. I've already been in that position where I've machine quilted a bunch on the long arm, but then needed to do a little bit of extra stuff and it was just easier to do it on the domestic once everything else is done. That's completely legal. You can start and stop on different machines as long as you know that you're remaining accurate, as well as you're keeping uh, respect to that seam allowance if you're talking patchwork. That's why we started those rumors years ago about starting and stopping on the same machine. It was all about your seam allowance, but this is machine quilting, so do what works best for you. Oh, and for me, it's time to roll this frame. And when I say roll the frame, I mean these bars all now need to be adjusted. So we're gonna unclamp our clamps that we're pulling the backing taut. There are ratchets here, so I need to 
loosen the ratchet so that it will just roll. And again, I'm just using the frame for the backing right now. Everything else is floating, so I do not need to loosen all the rest. But remember, always loosen all of the ratchets. Then on this cool frame here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this and I'm going to roll it through. And now I want to talk about what I'm thinking about and what I'm looking at as I do this, okay? So as I'm rolling it through right now, we know that this is where I last left off. So I want to be able to get that spot almost all the way back here so that that's where I'm now starting. I'm also petting because I did float this in here and that's why we're stitching in this direction across here. So you can see I've positioned the frame and the machine so that I'm getting my stop zone. But remember, I didn't fill in all of these spaces because I didn't want a straight line where you could see where I had rolled this. So I need to check and make sure, okay, can I get back here? And no, I can't actually get back here. Uh, Should have checked out a second ago. So I'm going to loosen the ratchet. I'm going to pull past my mark where I need to be a little bit. I'm going to engage the ratchet. I'm also going to now engage the ratchet back here. Notice I'm pulling it back taut this way. And then one more ratchet. One of the things we see in frame quilting is a lot of almost waffling that happens, especially along the edges of the quilt. We don't need this super, super taut, right? We just need it taut enough that there's no ripples in our backing, but we don't want it so, this is, this is not the Navy. We're not going to bounce a quarter off your bed here and make sure that you've got your frame tight enough. If you get it too tight, the frame is doing more than it's supposed to for you and it will start to cause some of that waffling. One of the things I'm already learning that I like to do, and you can even see it right here in the camera right now. See how the border is lined right up along the bar? That means everything's staying square in my frame and I'm super, super happy about that. Now, the next thing I want to check is can I get all the way to the end of the cats? I want to know the beginning and end of my travel, okay? And so no, I can't get all the way to the end of the cat. So I'm going to do this center of the panel in three moves. So we've just done one move. So because of that, I can come back in here and trace, but I'm going to run out of space very, very quickly. So I think what I'm going to try to do is catch that on the next roll or maybe right at the end. I want to come up right here and start in the half closest spot back to this side. So we're going to drop that needle right back down. And we're ready to rock and roll again. First following around the outline of the cat. And then I'm back on my brick wall, making sure it's all filled in. Because I'm so terrible at my target practice here, I am learning to use lines that are not as obvious when I've got a double back. And you can see here now, I'm filling into the areas I was quilting in and then quilting away from those areas. And that's what helps keep the ripple and everything coming out. I think that's gonna be my maximum travel for this. And again, a brick wall motif is a great motif, even if you didn't have the pre-printed bricks here to follow. Capturing the words hello in there as well. And now because I'm in the, this area here, I can bring it around, follow around the outside of the cat. Now I didn't think about that a minute ago when I was talking about it. Now I'm right back where I left off here. I can come around this orange cat. If all is lucky, I'll follow the black cat's tail. Oh, not very well. This will just help each of the individual little cats stand out a little bit. So we need to get up here and go around the gray cat's ears as well. And technically that was, oh, I was going to say I was ready to re-roll again, but I need to get up in here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out this area and re-roll it. And I think I can just follow a little bit more of the brick so that I don't have to cut thread to get there. That was easy.
Okay, and I'm in a great corner, a great stopping point here. That's gonna give me the travel I need. I'm gonna leave the white thread loaded in here. And this is another trick that I've learned in the last time I played with this. Because I'm not doing another stop, I can technically, if I'm careful, rewind the fabric or keep moving the advance of the fabric without even stopping thread. I'll keep the needle right over the spot where I left it. And as a matter of fact, if you're really careful, you can drop your needle into the down position so you don't lose your spot at all. And then go ahead and prepare to re-roll the frame. Lock that ratchet in. Pull this one tight. Maybe one more. There. And you'll get the feel of it. You'll start to be able to see the way it needs to be for you. Go ahead and always keep your clamps, but again, not pulling so tight from the sides that they're actually waffling. Okay, and because we didn't move our bobbin thread, we didn't cut, we're just gonna go ahead and pick right back up with the machine and continue our brick motif. Now I'm gonna come all the way to the edge, run it down, back. This way I just don't miss any of my spots. You can see that the machine moves so nicely that a lot of times I'm holding the quilt with one hand and the machine with the other. That's probably not appropriate. But if your machine's good, I guess it is. I'm gonna focus on the bricks first, come back to the cats, but hitting the outline of the cat on this side while I'm working. Okay, now the cats are all done. We have this orange thread that we need to put in there. And again, doing my best to stitch near the ditch. Here's another good uh, life lesson, uh, which would be better to teach than edit out of the video. So I'm going along the orange stripe and I'm thinking, boy, that stitching looks so good. You can't ar hardly see the thread at all. Yeah, well, it's because I broke the thread and I wasn't making any stitching. So if you break thread on the long arm, the bobbin is still intact where it broke off, right? And so you may have been dragging it back and forth. So it might be good to try to cut it if you can. If you can't get a hold of it, what I like to do is I start to pull the stitches back a few stitches because I still want to make sure that I'm secure. This would be a perfect baby project, so it's going to be washed all the time, right? So what I want to do now is I want to come in here and I want to take a needle down, a needle up again, so I have all the layers of everything I was working with. Now I'm going to make a couple stitches and move on. I have stopped the machine. I'm checking to make sure everything's holding. It is beautiful. And now we're ready to rock and roll. And just working with my hand, just to try to keep my patchwork looking as parallel as possible because I don't have any tension on this outside edge of the quilt top. So just pulling it in here. Okay, now let's go ahead and set this needle down. There's one more thing we can talk about. And at this point, if you're kind of gonna glaze over, I understand and don't worry about it. If you're new to long arming, one of the things you've heard before is you can't go forward and backwards in the frame. And that is often true. But right now, I have only layered my quilt back onto this project. 
Okay, so the only thing that was ever locked into the frame was the quilt back. The batting was floating, and the quilt top is floating or is now gone past the end point. So technically, I can actually back this up, and I need to right now because I forgot to catch that blue thread along the top border. So I'm pulling off my frame pieces here. I've got my fingers crossed that this is gonna work awesome. I do want to go ahead and um, see if I can set this frame while the needle's down. So I'm gonna unlock the ratchets. And actually I'm gonna ratchet this one back in the opposite direction. And I can just barely make it up to the spot that I'm at. So this is locked. I'm going to go ahead and re-engage. Lock that. I don't even need to go pull tension down there. I'm just going to pull tension right here. Go ahead and restart. Because remember, we had done stitching the ditch up here early on. Okay. Now, I'm close, but I have about this far to still go. Drop that, let's see, unlock here. Let it out a bit. Pull tight that way. Lock down, lock up. Don't ever take shortcuts, put your clamps back on. And then right back in to that first strip we did across the top. And because that works so well here, let's go ahead and come down to the frame and down here and do it. So we're gonna tie off and bring up needle. Cut the bobbin and the top thread. And then this time, let's come all the way down here. Needle down to bring the bobbin thread up single time. Stop, needle down. So you can see once you start to rechange your philosophy on the way that you actually do the machine quilting itself. <laughs> I can't say that and work the frame at the same time, of course that long arming is no more complicated because of the setup than free motion quilting domestic style. It just requires learning to do things that different than we used to do them. Nothing wrong with that. I love learning something new every day. And so I've just been finding that as I work through the frame, I'm not always doing it the way I used to do it on my other machines, but I'm certainly doing it much faster. The stitch quality is better because there are regulation packages built involved. And boy, it is much better on my body. I shouldn't confess to all of you because you think I'm this pinnacle of physical fitness, but yeah, man, my elbows were starting to get wore out from all that machine quilting. Ouch, I could barely get any surfing any done. So anyways, I wanted the long arm frame actually number one for my body, but I was intimidated about what would happen in the structure of the machine quilting. So I'm very, very pleased. Of course, the Juki's a fantastic model. I tried them all. This is by far my favorite. Uh, it runs incredible. Um, it has laser based encoders in it. Uh, so it doesn't have wheels. So when I'm running my stitch regulation, everything runs beautifully smooth. It's just fabulous. Perfect machine. I really enjoy working with it. And our project is all set here. The next thing I actually like to do is just get ready to take it off the frame. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, even power down the machine for safety. I'm going to make sure all the clamps are pulled. I'm going to loosen my lower ratchet here. And let me just show you this. These 
these are what we call leader strips. And the leader strips, it's a piece of, well, cotton couture, of course, that I made that I have just safety pin basted on um, each time. Some folks will do it with zippers. Some folks will do it with safety pins. Um, I started with safety pins because I didn't know what I would like. I do see myself in the very near future investing in some zipper by the yard and putting on um, so that you can just zip on and it makes things really nice for the quilt backing. Um, you can probably tell by the lower end of the frame, I have an entire roll of our Hobbs 8020, the poly cotton blend batting on the frame at all times. Um, I did that on purpose to make life easy, efficient, and there you see the roll of batting right there. Um, but just make life easy. Yeah, get it out of my way, put it on the frame so I can just drop stuff on all of the time. Uh, I really like that philosophy for sure. And then I've done the same at the top. So as I unload the quilt project itself, I just have a few more stafey pins to pull out here. Once the project's off, you're all clear. You can take it right back over to your workspace. Throw it down. And you can't see any problems on the back and neither can I. That's a great thing, but you always say, hey, Rob, we want to see the backside. And I assume you mean the quilts. So at any rate, here it is. It turned out perfect. The front, of course, I've got some trimming and some binding and all of that kind of stuff to do, but boy, was that incredibly fast or what? And again, the big question we are answering today was how do you deal with something with a scene or a panel or something like that that doesn't fit in the rolls of the frame? Well, you just think about it in sections. You use very basic motifs to fill in the space and if you're floating the project, you can actually go forwards or backwards, and hopefully that's a new tip for some of you. I've always been told I could. I just did it for my first time right over there, and as I walked back onto the set, I'm having a panic moment. I don't know that I recorded any of that with one of the cameras. We'll see how this video turns out. Maybe I should have just stayed out in the ocean and surfed all day, but I couldn't stay away from all of you any longer. Not only because I love hanging out with all of you here at Making It Fun, but because I've got some fabric to send to some quilt shops and some prizes and stuff. So if you've never seen one of our shows here before, what I like to do is I have a mystery box of questions. I am going to pull a question out of here in just a moment. I'm gonna read the question. Uh, you will have until the Friday following this video to answer your question in the comments below on this video. Make sure you're subscribed to Making It Fun with Rob Appel. Answer the question. I pick one random prize winner and then I'll ask you to let us know what your favorite quilt shop is. If you wanna tell us in the comments already, great. We love to hear what your favorite quilt shops are. I will send them a prize and I will send you a prize and it is super, super fun. We're having a blast with it. So with no further ado, let's get the prize questions, the mystery question ready here. Oh, I always flip them over weird. Let's just grab one in here. I have no idea what it says. Oh, <laughs> what a perfect question for today. My answer was, they just came out of the box. Your answer, please, in the comments below. When was the last time you had your sewing machine serviced? It's a good question. It's an important answer. Uh, we'll get back to you with what the appropriate manufacturers recommended is on that in another video very soon. You know I'm a machine mechanic as well, and I have very strong opinions about taking great care of my power toys. Thank you, Juki, for the beautiful new power toys. They did just come out of the box. They ran beautifully out of the box, and they are always oiled and serviced constantly. All of my machines are. How about you? When was the last time you had your sewing machine serviced? Comment below. We'll see you next time right here. Hat head, making it fun. Hey, are you planning to autofocus anytime today there? Thank you.